It's five in the morning here in Grants Pass and I'm getting to work here at Jordan Fabrics. This is the building we're in. But it's a beautiful morning. The sun's gonna come up over the mountain here. But what I thought was really nice, it's still a little, a little bit dark out, but To the west, there's the moon. It's going to be going down soon, but it's a beautiful morning. Very pleasant weather here. Hope you're having a good day. Yeah, hi. I'm Matt Jordan, and I'm here at Jordan Fabrics. And I was talking with my wife, and we decided this evening to show you how to make a quilt called Long and Tall uh, from Cozy Quilt Designs. A very simple quilt to make. I, I think you'll enjoy it. And it uses two and a half inch strips. And the two and a half inch strip set we have chosen is one we call Glow. And it's fabrics designed by Amy Butler from Westminster Designs. And Westminster Designs also handles uh, uh, the designs of Kay Facet and very well-known fabric artists, uh, mostly with a little modern twist to most of them. I'd like to show you the quilt, so uh, let's go over and and take a look at it. All right, so I'm headed over here, and I I hung this quilt up so we could get a really good look at it. Um, you can see these are just the two and a half inch strips. These are just the two and a half inch strips coming down. It's, it's, it's relatively simple. There's little highlight fabric end caps that we put on it. A small little border. Background fabric. Very easy. And then a larger border. And let's see what we have on the back here. And, and so on this back, what we did was just choose a fabric that we had in the shop that kind of coordinated with it. I don't think that's necessarily an Amy Butler fabric, but I think it, this coordinates with it. So we, we put it on the back of the quilt. It's a very pretty design. I think you would enjoy making it. And let's go over to the workshop now and get started and have some fun. All right, we're ready to start the first step. So we've got to cut out our background fabric and our accent fabric, which is these little caps that go on the top of each strip. So I've picked out these fabrics here. You want sort of a plain color. It can have a little texture. It can be a batik. I'm using Moda's Grunge for both of these because they have a little something going on, but they read as a plain. So I've already cut some fabric off the bolts here and I've got it ironed so that it's all ready to cut. It's real important to iron your fabrics really, really flat. For the background, we're going to need some strips, a 16 inch, a 12 inch, an 8 inch, and a 3 inch. So I'm going to start with the 3 inch. I like to use a weight to hold the ruler here. Keeps it nice and straight. It acts like a whole other hand up there. Now we'll cut the accent fabric, and all we need is one and a half inch strips here. So you can cut them one at a time. I like to fold them and cut four layers at a time, but that's just a matter of preference. You want to cut what is comfortable for you. These are one and a half inches wide. And I think that's all I need. Now we'll put these aside and we'll open up the strip set. So I've got my 40 piece strip set here. These are also known as jelly rolls, bolly pops, but they're all two and a half inch strips cut exact. We cut ours with a straight edge. We don't use a pinked edge. So here is 10 of the strips here, and we've got 10 more here, 
So we've got 40 different strips here. So you can see the variety of fabrics here. They're really fun. So we've got a lot of different textures and patterns and these will mix up into a really nice quilt. For the long tall pattern in the size we're making, I need 12 strips at a time. I've got 10 here and let's grab a couple here. So we're going to put these 12 in one group. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten here. Let's take a couple more. We've got twelve for this group. And then we'll take these ten and grab a couple more. And we've got twelve in that group. We've got a few strips left over, and we may cut those up and mix them in. But for now, we need to subcut these twelve, and then we're going to subcut these twelve to a different size and subcut these 12 to an even other size. We've got our strips, 12 here, 12 here, 12 here. So these are going to get subcut. Now the pattern will tell you the sizes, so you don't have to remember this, but I'm going to be doing 17 and four, 12 and eight, 20 and a half. So all we have to do is subcut the whole stack to those sizes, it'll tell you in the pattern, and now I'll show you how we subcut them. So let's subcut these pieces. So most patterns that call for strips, they're already two and a half inches, but you need other cuts. So we call that subcutting. I'm going to take two strips because I'm comfortable cutting four layers here. And I'm going to make my first cut on the end here. And I don't use a weight for this because my hands are on either side of the strip and it holds it really nicely. So I'm going to do a 17, so I'm going to measure this over 17. And then I'm going to do the 4 inch. I'm going to go ahead and do that, those same measurements to this whole stack. Check my pattern for this, it's 12s and 8s. Check my pattern for this, it's 20 and a half. We'll cut all those up and then we'll be ready to sew. I've put aside the printed strips for a moment because we need to sew the background and the accent. So these backgrounds each get one strip sewn to the end of it. So I'm gonna open these up and I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam and I'm going to stitch this all along the one edge here. It's important when you're using long strips like this not to stretch them. So you want to just lay them right down on top of themselves, not stretch, and just carefully sew along the edge. It does go really fast. But the blocks, everything will lay much better if you don't stretch anything. So we are going to sew one accent piece to each one of these pieces. Now we're going to sew the next strip onto the next background. As you sew these on, you don't need to finger press them. We are not going to press them or iron them open at all. We're going to leave them closed just like this and we're gonna take them back to the cutting table and we're gonna cut them just the way it is. So just keep sewing until you've got one accent on each background. I've got all the accent pieces sewn to the background, so now I'm ready to subcut all of these. So these are gonna get cut into two and a half inch strips. Now, I didn't even iron it. I just have it laid on my board with this right along the edge. If you feel like you've stretched it or it's wavery at all, you can take it over and iron it, but mine is nice and flat. If you're feeling really brave, you can take another one of these and you can put it right on top and you can cut it at the same time. I actually take all of mine and layer them up and cut them all at once. So if you line them up really, really straight, you can do this, but Feel free to do these one at a time. This just saves me a lot of time when I do them all at the same time. So you want to have them nice and straight, 
straight everywhere. Now I can get all the layers done all at once and I'm going to go back to using my weight. So we're going to get a nice clean fresh cut at the beginning here. And then we're just going to do two and a half inches all the way across. Now you can see why I didn't iron these open. It's hard to keep it really flat to cut if those are ironed open. It's much easier to do it this way. So just cut this two and a half inches all the way across. Now in the middle of each strip is the fold that existed when your fabric was folded on the bolt or when your jelly roll was folded up. I usually don't use this section, so I'm just going to cut this part away because it's sometimes really, really hard to get that fold ironed out, and I don't like that in my quilt. We've got plenty of room, so we're just going to make a fresh cut here and then start measuring again so we don't have to use that part at all. So we're just not going to use that. Now we're going to keep cutting. I've got all the background accent pieces all cut. So see, these are all ready. We've got all the different sizes here. We've got small, medium, large. And so we can stack these all up. And then we will sew these onto our printed strips and we'll get our blocks going. So this was a really fast way to get all these guys sewn. And they're really accurate like this because we didn't iron it first. So I'm gonna stack them up and then we'll put them with the strips and we'll start sewing the blocks together. I've gathered up all of my pieces here. These are the background accent pieces that are separated by size. And here's all of the pieces from the strip set separated by size. So all we're gonna do is take these shortest pieces and sew them onto the longest background accent. And this is the little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, all the way up. This doesn't get sewn to anything. So this is going to form our block. So let me show you one block. I've got it done. When these are sewn together, they're all going to be exactly the same length. And that's what I've got here. The long background, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter. And this basic block is what makes up the whole quilt. So we're going to sew them together now. So I'm going to take these first two pieces and I'm going to chain piece them. I'm going to sew this to this, the whole stack, and I'm not going to iron it till they're all the way done. So let's do this step first. The best way to sew these is with this piece down and put this on top of it. So we're going to line up the edges and use a quarter inch seam. And I'm just gonna chain piece, so I'm just not even looking at what fabric is going where, I'm just gonna st stitch them all together. Then when we're done with this whole section, we're gonna take it over and iron it. Just continue on for the whole stack. I've got my whole stack of pieces sewn here and I'm going to show you how I like to iron them. So I like to have a straight edge here so I can make sure that I'm ironing it straight because it is possible to iron this crooked. We don't want to do that. We want it straight. So I want all the seam allowances to be going towards the print and away from the background. So a good way to do that is to put it down on the table, put a little pressure on it and then pull away. You can feel those seam allowances facing that way then. Now I'm going to make sure they're open and I'm going to make sure that it is lined up parallel to this straight edge here. If you put your iron down, you can kind of pull away and they will be nice and open. And then just double check and make sure you've got it straight because it makes making the blocks as you go up a lot easier if these are straight. So here's another one. So Put your hand on it a little bit and then slide this down the ironing board and you can feel those seam allowances go the other way. Pull it all open and flat. Hold it with the iron. Give a little pressure here. Don't stretch it, but just a little pressure. 
and then make sure that it looks lined up nice and straight. Now we're gonna do that with all of these pieces and then we've got some of the other sizes here. It's the same procedure. You still want all those seam allowances away from the background. So a little pressure, pull it away, make sure it's nice and straight. Same thing. I've got one of each size piece here and this is what we need for one block. So I've got them laid in order here and we're just going to sew each seam. So again, line everything up and use a quarter inch seam. I like to take a couple stitches at the beginning and that will hold it and then you can stretch this, make sure everything is lined up and sew right along the edge. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to finger press the seam towards the right. So I'm going to press it away from the background where I can. So I'm going to make my seam that way and I'm going to just draw my fingernails down. I'm opening it with my hands here and finger pressing down along this line. It just makes it much flatter when we go to iron it. So now we're going to stow this seam. And I've got all these laid so that all of these seam allowances are facing down. They're facing down here, they're facing down here. And that makes it easier for you to sew them without a seam allowance flipping. So they'll stay nice and flat. I'm going to sew the last seam here. The whole block sew together really, really fast. It's fairly easy sewing, so this is a good project if you need a big quilt in a hurry. We're going to finger press all these seams. All of these seams were to the right here. So just pull it open a little. Use your fingernail. You have to put a little extra pressure right where that seam the seam allowances here on. Make sure they're going the way you want them to go. Now this finger pressing means that when we take it over to the ironing board, those seams are for the most part laying the direction we want them to go. You can see it's a little bit unflat here so you can give it a little extra pressing, but now we'll take it to the ironing board and we'll give it a nice steam pressing. So that's the whole block there. We need to make 12 of these and then we need to make 12 that look just like this, but they're mirror images. So they're going to have the same pieces and parts, but it's going to look like the opposite. So let's iron this and then I'll show you both halves. I've got the block nicely ironed here. It's real important to get it ironed nice and flat because that makes sewing the rest of the quilt such a pleasure. So you want to make 12 of these blocks. Then we're going to make 12 more that are mirror images. So it's the same parts and pieces. They're just going in the opposite order when you sew the rows together. Now this is going to get sewn to here and that's our whole block. The whole quilt is made up of these. So they'll just be turned different directions to make the quilt big like you see here. And we'll get all those put together. We'll put on a little border matching the accent and then we'll put on a bigger border in one of these really nice prints and the quilt will be all done. Okay. Let me show you where our Patrick block will fit onto the quilt here. So this is the block we were working on. Fits right here and then you turn it over and it fits right here. I really love this quilt because there's big pieces of patchwork Amy Butler has gorgeous prints, a lot of which have a really big scale. So this gives you a nice chance to see some of those big prints. I also love all the background here because you can really go crazy with the quilting. We did a pattern called Tangled and it's very swirly. We used a turquoise thread and it looks really good. The quilt is nice and big. We used a great big print on the back, really elegant. They call this a twin size, but it's about 73 by 96. It's almost a full size quilt and it's a quick sew. So if you have a jelly roll with some fabrics you like a lot, even batiks would look just gorgeous in this. 
you can stitch it up really fast. Thanks for watching our tutorial today to make the long tall quilt and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.